Uh, welcome to day two of e-learning. Um, so I uh, want to go back to a topic that you learned in honors chemistry. And for some of you, this is two years old, and some of you guys had Walker. Uh, and I know he taught this as well. Uh, but this is just meant to uh, be a little bit of refresh. So what you'll notice in this the assignment is um, a couple resources. Okay, you'll see this guy. Um, and so I want you to have that handy. Maybe you have that from last year or you can get an image of that on your phone. Um, and then uh, you should also have your periodic table. Okay, so our uh, pink sheet. Okay, so we're going to be doing some electron configuration. Today is going to be focused mainly on how do we do, uh, how do we list um, the uh, electrons and their the energy levels. We're just going to do the longhand version. There is a shorthand version of this, um, but the shorthand version is not necessarily tested on the AP exam. Uh, but we do want to start talking about um, where these electrons go. Okay, so. Um, we're going to be doing the electron configuration here and then be drawing a little Bohr model over here. The Bohr model we're going to draw is going to look a little bit different from this. This is a real one. We're going to do a shorthand version so we're not spending all of our time drawing little dots. Okay, but I wanted to show you this because one of the things to keep in mind when we talk about atomic structure, this is a, a battle between attractive forces and repelling forces. Okay, so in the nucleus, we have a buildup of protons, and as we add more protons, the strength of the pull, the nuclear pull, is going to pull in our electrons. At the same time, as we add electrons to these energy levels, the inner electrons will push or repel away the outer electrons. Okay, So the best held electrons are going to be the inner ones, A, because they are really close, so there's a short distance, okay? Even if there were no electrons here pushing away, these still would have a lower pull to the nucleus than the inner ones because of the distance. So attraction is two things. How much attraction we have because of the size of the nucleus, all right, and what the distance is. So the inner electrons here are gonna have a stronger uh, attraction because this is a shorter distance. These will have a weaker attraction because of the greater distance. Now, the other thing that these electrons have going against them is literally these inner electrons are going to push or repel them. We call that shielding. We'll get into some of those details a little bit more, but that's just kind of our basics. The first thing we're starting with today is knowing where all these electrons are. How do they sort themselves out in an arrangement? And uh, the analogy I give in class, some of you may remember this, is let's say we're going to a concert. Okay, not a concert today because obviously, you know, we'd all have to be really spread out. Okay, and let's say um, you have your performer here. Okay, so here's your stage, here's your performer. Okay, and as people come in, they're going to start filling the first row, then the second row. Okay, and those first couple rows get pretty packed. As you come in later, you're probably not going to want to necessarily sit next to anybody because what's really the difference of being in either the third row or fourth row, okay? And electrons kind of do this as well. They spread out, okay, uh, as we add more of them. First of all, the farther away you get from the nucleus, or in this case the stage, the less draw there is to the nucleus, okay? And so these electrons start to spread out. Plus, as we get farther away, we actually find that there's more space in these outer regions, okay? So um, we're going to have, what we're going to see with our, our chart here is that we're going to sometimes fill these early energy levels. One, two, will fill up full. But as we f start filling out the outer ones, sometimes we'll fill a little bit in this fourth energy level and then go back to filling the third energy level, okay? And uh, there's a process that we're going to talk about tomorrow that shows us how scientists get those data. But this is the chart that they came up with. Okay. So the cool thing about this is I would put this in your packet. Okay. Uh, for the AP exam, just to talk a little bit about the AP exam. AP exam. This is kind of wild. You're going to take it at home. You're going to have 45 minutes to do uh, an FRQ at home test. 
Now, I don't know what day it's going to be yet. We're supposed to hear in two days when that will be, okay? But it's going to be an at-home test, which means you can use resources with you, okay? So as we get closer, I'm going to give you a list of things that I think you should probably have handy with yourself, okay? For right now, for sure, for sure, you should have your formula sheet. Oop, there's our formula sheet. And you should have your periodic table, okay? Um... Uh, but we'll we'll have more of that information as time goes on. So um, you should have this up on your uh, screen, or if you ever print it off, you may have it from last year. It's not in the Chem Bible. Um, maybe I'll put it in for next year. Uh, but what we want to do is just do this. How do I go from this chart? Okay, uh, my honors kids memorized this last year. Okay, um, we're just going to use this chart. I'm not going to have you memorize it this year, but you should have it handy. Uh, and we're going to do the electron configuration and then the Bohr model. And this will be the basis of our conversations for the next couple days, okay? Because we want to understand uh, how the atoms are put together and how the structure leads to their bonding properties because that's really what it's been all about, all right? Um, I'm also going to give you this one too, all right? So this is a little bit different layout because this actually tells you where the last electron is, okay? So here's our P block, okay? And the last electrons for our noble gases are... Uh, S2, P6, 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 okay, and they're filling the P's, and then we see the S's, 1, 2's. Uh, the D's get a little squirrely, okay, because they don't, we're going to fill them uh, a little bit different than this. There's exceptions to the filling rules, because notice it goes 1, 2, 3, skips 4, goes to 5, 5 doubles, and then 6, 7, 8, 9. We're just going to pretend like this doesn't happen, okay, just for our purposes with understanding electron configuration okay so we do have some exceptions here ap does not have you memorize them i just want to mention it so that you're aware of them that this nice little chart here for filling works 90 percent of the time okay it doesn't work all the time in the d block okay um, but it's going to work most of the time all right so take a look here we've got magnesium so i'm going to look at magnesium um, and i put this little box here for number of electrons uh, so I'm actually going to do the first three. Uh, magnesium is uh, atomic number 12, 12 electrons. Argon, 18. Uh, vanadium, 23. Okay. So I'm just going to show you these three, and then I'm going to show you how to put them into the Bohr model so we can look at, at what they have. And then just we'll talk really briefly about some of the properties of these as well. Okay, so I've got my chart here. All right, and how this chart works is I start at the top, follow the yellow brick road. This will be attached to the assignment. And I'm going to start, I've got 12 electrons. So my first two are going to go in energy level one, suborbital S, and I can put two in there. Okay, and then it's going to follow by 2S2, followed by, so I went 1S2, 2S2, now I'm going to go 2P6. So far, of my 12 electrons, I have placed 2, 4, 4 plus 6 is 10. So I've got 2 left to go. That's going to be 3s2. Okay. So how you can also look at this is this way. Okay. Once we have these written down, this is en what is in energy level 1. This is what is in energy level 2. And this is what is in energy level 3. Okay, so we have them in different areas. So let's do this. Uh, let's do 12 protons. Okay, there's our nucleus. And then I've got one, two, three energy levels. One, two, three. Okay, and I'm not going to, typically what I like to do is we'll spend some time doing this. Where we'll actually put these out. Now, one thing to know about electrons in energy levels Notice that they, they, they uh, place themselves with pairs, but these pairs are at a distance from each other. They actually repel each other inside those. So they, they pair up. Okay, these are suborbitals. And so um, they're going to pair up and spread out. Okay, so we call this the repulsion uh, portion of this. Okay, so they're repelling against each other. But for, for what we're doing today, I just want you to get reacquainted uh, with um, electrons being at energy levels. So we're just going to do this. We're just going to put two electrons in that, okay, and they're going to spread out. We're going to put two and six, so eight in the next energy level, and then we're going to put two 
and the last ones. And as you're doing this, what I want you to think about is which electrons are held most tightly, okay? So there's two things that um, are gonna help this out. First of all, the force of the nucleus. How many protons, okay? So all these electrons, okay, are around 12 protons, but they're not at the same distance, okay? Which is, means that these inner ones are going to be more tightly held because they're closer and these outer ones are going to be more weakly held because they are farther away. Now, the other thing that these outer ones have is they have the shielding of the inner ones. So energy level one and two actually push against energy level three because remember, electrons are negatively charges, charged and negatives repel negatives, okay? So the inner ones are tightly held. The outer ones are more loosely held. Two reasons, okay? They're far away. Okay, and they also have repelling or shielding uh, from the inner electrons. Okay, so here's our electron configuration right here, and here's our Bohr model. Uh, argon, argon has 18. All right, so let's take a look at this. Uh, a lot of this is going to be repeated. Okay, so that's up to 12 electrons, and I need six more. All right, so I'm going to go on my chart. I've already done 3s2. My next six are going to be my 3P6. All right. Um, and I'm going to block these again so I can write them out. And I've got 18 protons. Um, I'm actually going to show you something here. Uh, I've got two here. I've got eight here. And I've got another eight here. So here's the deal. Notice I drew these a little bit smaller than the first one. And that's on purpose because this atom has 18 protons. So its nucleus has a stronger, we call it an effective nuclear charge. Which means the more protons you put in one spot, the stronger they get and the more they pull in those electrons. Okay. So this atom is going to actually be uh, heavier and smaller. Okay. The, the weight of it comes from the additional protons and the neutrons but it's gonna be smaller because it has more pull. Those protons, it, see, see, argon and magnesium both have three energy levels, but argon has more electron, or oh, sorry, more protons, and it's gonna pull in those electrons and make it a little bit smaller, okay? So you don't have to draw yours to scale, but I do want you to think about what's going on with those charges as we're doing this. Um, next one, vanadium, okay, vanadium. Uh, it has 23. So a lot of this is going to repeat itself. And some of, you use, some of you are going to say, well, can I do the shorthand if you remember how to do the shorthand? And I am okay with that. Uh, but I'm not going to go over it. It's not going to be tested that way on the AP exam. So um, we're just going to do our review here and then kind of move on. Um, okay, so this is brings me up to 18 electrons. I need 23, so 2, 4, 10, 12, 18. I need uh, 5 more, okay? So I'm at 3P6. I'm going to do 4S2, okay? And then 4S2 is followed by 3D, and that will give me, let's see, I needed 5, right? So I need another 3 here. So I'll just check to make sure I have the right. So 2, 4, 10. 12, 18, 20, 23. Now notice that the P, uh, the 3S and 3P and 3D are separated. You're actually going to fill a little bit out of that outer energy level and then come back and refill the inner one a little bit, okay? And this is because of that repulsion. The nucleus isn't strong enough to hold everything and fill the third energy level uh, completely because at the third energy level we're now getting farther and farther away all right so the electron configuration for this um, is going to look a little bit differently now when we do uh, this for vanadium let's see let's put our 23 protons in the middle okay energy level one two three four I'm not really looking at this one for size like it did with the first two. I'm just drawing this one, okay? Uh, but I'm gonna put, let's see, here's my first energy level. Here's my second energy level. 
My third one is going to have the 8 here, and it will have the 3 here. So it's actually going to have 8 plus 3, or 11, and then the fourth energy level will have 2. Okay, so that's how we uh, are going to fill these and, and kind of bridge between electron configuration as well as drawing Bohr models. Okay, and as we're drawing these Bohr models, I want you to think about what electrons are most tightly held. Now, I'm going to add, I want you to think about this for a second, and then I'll explain it. Is think about which inner electrons are going to be held the strongest between these three elements. So think about that for a second. I'll give it a pause. Okay, have your answer in your head? Okay. If you said that these electrons, this 1s2 and the vanadium, are going to be the most strongly held, you'd be correct. And the reason is, is because of how many protons we have here. Okay, so the strength of the nucleus is based on how many protons. Um, and we can say these are tightly held. There's no shielding yet because, like, these guys out here have actually... Oh, uh, what is this? 21 electrons getting in the way. So these electrons are having a hard time being held in, okay, by the nucleus because we've got um, some electrons that are blocking. Remember electrons? Negative. Negatives repel negatives, okay? So the only attractive force is the negative to positive attraction between the electrons and the protons, okay? So um, today's work is a little bit light. I just want you to do some practice like I did. So write out your electron configurations, do this, and start thinking about which electrons are held closely and which are held weakly, okay? We're going to use our vocab terms too. Uh, these are our inner electrons, okay? And then these are our outer electrons, okay? We're, we're filling our electron configuration, okay? Hope you guys are doing well. Be safe. Talk to you soon.